Hey guys, I'm in Banff, Alberta right now. I'm shooting a video for y'all to detail how I made my Honda CRV into a camper, and this just happened. Yeah. They just hopped over the guardrail, and now they're uh, chewing on some gravel. Keep me company. So, I don't want to disturb them too much, so I'm going to kind of wait till they go. <laughs> but wow. Uh, anyway, here we go. I'm going to show you guys how I built my Honda CRV into a full-time camper. I made another video on it. It's kind of like an overview. This is going to be more detailed, step-by-step, -step, almost instructions on how to do that. Again, it's kind of magical here, so welcome along. Thank you to all my current subscribers, all my new subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. If you like this kind of content, if you have a small SUV or SUV or van or whatever it is, and you want to learn how to build it out and kind of travel on the road, and just witness magical moments like this, uh, then please follow along, subscribe. Uh, there's more to come, lots more. I'm in Banff, Alberta right now, but I'm all over Canada and the US. So follow along, subscribe, here we go. Okay, so here's just a quick glimpse of the vehicle itself before we get into breaking it all down. Again, nice big shelf, six drawers, Got some tools and whatnot back here. Here's the bed or the foot end of the bed. Sleeping bag, four inch foam. We've got three quarter inch plywood right there. And underneath as the frame for the bed and also storage, doubles as both. I've got those big rubber made, rubber neck, uh, 14 gallon bins. Just here's the inside here. You can see I've got some storage and uh, shelf space here on the back of the seat. Again, those bins underneath. I've kept this little seat in. If you watch my previous video, you'll see why. Lighting up top. And a 26 inch wide bed. My feet just kind of live under that shelf. There's plenty of uh, height for my foot. That was all measured. I'm going to show you how. But again, yeah, here's just a little look inside. You got the heat shields. On the windows, they also cover the front windows and the front there. First things first, let's get into these drawers here. So as you can see, I took three out just to show you the placement. They're just sitting over here. These drawers I bought off of Amazon. Uh, most of my stuff today that I'm gonna go through, uh, at least the purchases were uh, bought on Amazon. So I'm gonna link um, many of the main items. These are kind of where I started with the, uh, with the build. I knew that I liked these drawers. I measured them when I found them on Amazon, and then I walked out to my vehicle, and I measured the back. I measured from the wheel well, which is just behind here. I'm gonna show you that in one second. So here's that wheel well right here. You can see how that sticks out. Other than that, the back of these vehicles are mostly flush, right? You've got a straight wall, a flat floor, but these wheel wells stick out, and you gotta work around them. So what I did was I flushed up, I measured basically from where the wheel well, it gets flat again, straight back. And I knew I was gonna have to put my leg there along that line because I knew that these drawers were just a little too long to fit from here to the wheel well. So uh, in fact, they come up and they touch the wheel well just right there. So again, kind of makes a flat wall and this space here becomes unusable for your drawer space. So you have to keep that in mind. But what this is now is just extra storage. It's really handy. I didn't want the leg coming up on one side of the shelf and then tacking it on that way. I felt that strength would be an issue. So I have the leg coming up underneath the shelf and the shelf then hanging over. Uh, it hangs over, oh, I get to say about five or six inches on this side of the leg over here. So that's all I did. That's pretty simple. I just put a little one by one right here and then uh, made some pilot holes with a drill and then screwed in uh, just twice there. So that's it. So that's that, you guys. That's a look at the leg of the shelf. It's pretty much the same on the other side. Basically, it's all the same uh, three-quarter inch board as the uh, bed panel. 
This is a little bit thicker. I think it's a one inch board. Now all this wood you could purchase and maybe you'll have to purchase if you ever do something like this, but I happen to find this wood free. So lucky me. And all I did here was I extended my top shelf. I cut it. Again, I'll, I'll break away to show you that. Now you can see the shelf and how it extends in. Follows the lines of the vehicle. Comes right around. And it's about two inches from the wall there. Or from the window, I should say. All right, so again, 15 inches deep, and I believe it's about 44 inches wide, if I remember correctly. Every vehicle is going to be different, so that measurement doesn't matter so much. You'll figure that out on your own. But again, once I got it measured, I just kind of took my time with these cuts, you know, guys. I had this on a board, and I cut one angle there thinking it would be okay. It didn't quite fit pull it out you know you're, you're cutting this top board before you're assembling the legs and all that this is just a board at that point right so you get it in there with your hands lift it in see if it's gonna fit if it doesn't trim that back a bit I finally got it just right I got it so that I could have this pretty much sitting right where it was needed because of course I'm gonna need to close this door right so I can't have this uh, coming out too too much and of course I want maximum space and storage, so I don't want it going in too, too little, you know, or coming out too little. So you find your sweet spot and you make your final cuts. Or again, you just kind of keep trimming a little bit here and there. Don't trim off too much at first because you can't take back what you've cut out, but you can always cut more. So measure precisely, cut carefully, Cut small first and then kind of make your cuts a little bit bigger, you know, as you go. Uh, right here, I just got some felt tabs. This thing doesn't really move that much, but if it does, again, on a really windy road, uh, you want it to not scratch the heck out of your vehicle, you know? Um, again, that's me really tugging on it. So this thing is very secure, doesn't really move that much, uh, but you know it will jiggle a little bit on you as you go and go crazy on these mountain roads uh, this is just a little carbon monoxide detector if you're gonna cook in your vehicle I absolutely recommend one of those you don't want to be a statistic as far as carbon monoxide goes so be careful guys and there are a few bucks on Amazon again I'll link that below okay so that's pretty much the shelf and then at the bottom of the legs you've got these anchor points these are just you know, they're there. I, I knew they were going to be there. Of course, you look at your vehicle, you see what's usable, and I knew I could flush my leg up to it and use that. And that basically keeps, keeps it from moving. See, I'm pushing on the shelf right now, and that thing doesn't want to go. So use what you got, you guys, when you're building. Look at your vehicle closely and figure out what you can do to make everything secure. Let's get back to these drawers just for a moment. Now... I use three drawers, okay? The height of which you can measure before you even purchase them, okay guys? Everything that you're gonna build around, and that's how I recommend you do it, buy your big stuff like the drawers, buy, or, or don't buy, but you know, look at buying the big stuff like the drawers, the rubber neck, uh, rubber made bins, all this stuff that you're gonna use as like a major component of your build, look at it on Amazon or wherever you're buying it and you'll find that they have the measurements. So you find the width, the depth, the depth, excuse me, the height, all that stuff, and then you go out to your vehicle, make the measurements, see if it's even gonna fit. If it doesn't fit, you gotta find something else, right? Now these are the things that I landed on after doing that research. Now what I had to do is I knew it was a certain length Let's say 14 inches, because I think that's what it is. 14 inches long. I knew <clears throat> that it had to be about oh, two inches in from the from the uh, the back rail, the door rail here. I knew that because it's going to come over my other shelves, and they're going to hit this curvature right here. Okay. So you do all that measuring, and then 
you purchase if everything's okay. Now I also knew because it was 14 inches and about two inches off of this back rail that I needed to make a cut in my bed to fit these things. Because basically two of these shelves takes up about half the space in the back of my vehicle, almost exactly half, maybe a tad over. And then I knew that my bed being 26 inches was in fact wider than that. So I compromised and I decided to make the foot end of my bed, which is really only about 12 inches there, I decided to make that slightly more narrow because I realized, well, my feet can take it. I want width up at the torso and just above, you know, around the knee because I, I need the width because I'm a side sleeper and I like to kick a leg over, right? Now, with this, it's totally fine, it works. I just decided I would cut my bedboard to fit to make these shelves work. And that's exactly what I did. Now, in order to do so, what I had to do to make these bins fit, as you'll see, I just got a little creative. I cut the handles off of these Rubbermaid bins. You just get yourself a little handsaw. Anything you got, just make it work. You don't need fancy tools. You know, I just got a little handsaw and I just cut those right off of there. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, this Rubbermaid bin without the handles is exactly 20 inches wide. So I got very lucky there. But again, half of it's luck and half of it is smart planning. So plan, 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 then make your purchases, then begin your build when you're absolutely sure everything's going to fit. It's such a good feeling to do that, to know that you haven't wasted your time, you haven't wasted your money, you've got everything right where it needs to be, and just go ahead and knock it together like Lego. Uh, it's really great. So again, there we go. That's the back end. This is why I made this notch to fit and accommodate these drawers, okay? That's pretty much it for the drawers and the shelf, you guys. Let's kind of take a closer look at this bed now and see how I did that. So I'm in the middle of taking my bed apart so I can show you exactly how I made it. But I just want to talk about these sheets for one quick second. Now, if you build a small bed, a single bed in your unit, you might think, man, what am I going to do for sheets? Uh, everything's too big. Go on Amazon and buy yourself or go to a store, whatever it is, however you do your shopping, find yourself some massage table sheets. They're perfect. They work like a charm and they fit a smaller build. All right, that's what these are. They're microfiber massage table sheets. I will link them below. Okay guys, it is bedtime. In my build, there are three major components of my bed. At the base, we have these Rubbermaid rubber neck bins. They are very sturdy. You can modify them and they will still work just fine and they hold a lot of stuff. These are fantastic. That's the base and basically frame of my bed. Above that I have three quarter inch plywood and that was cut to my desired width that work with the dimensions of my vehicle. So you've got to get inside the vehicle and kind of move around and see what is possible, right? From where it is right now, the front of that to the very foot, and it do the door does close, of course, that is 72 inches. For most people, 72 inches is gonna be the sweet spot. It's exactly six feet. Um, all like sleeping pads that you see for hiking, for camping, they're all about 72 inches. So we've got our three quarter inch plywood on top of our base. And then on top of that, the third and final component, component, maybe the most important and definitely the most comfortable, is four inch foam. Now this was a sheet of foam that I bought off of Amazon. I will link it below. Uh, it was about $75, so one of the more expensive items that I purchased, single items. Uh, but you know, it's so worth it. You need to find something that's going to be comfortable long term and warm uh, to sleep on. So go ahead and spend the money if you need to. Heck, if you can find something for cheaper or you can find something for free that'll make do, go ahead and do that. There are no rules here. I'm only showing you what worked for me. 
So I will link this. This was a 30 inch wide. Again, make sure you get a piece of foam that is wide enough for your bed because many of these sheets of foam, foam you will find are uh, 20 to 25 inches wide, perhaps. I knew I wanted my bed 26 because those are the measurements that I made that I was most comfortable with. Plenty of room to sleep on my side, kick my knees up, my legs up over, be very comfortable. I sleep so well on this thing. So again, back to the dimensions of this foam. This is a 30 inch wide uh, piece of foam and I believe it was 80 inches long. So I erred on the side of more foam knowing that I would just cut it. There are 72 inch long pieces of foam and again like I said about uh, typically around 20 inches wide but that wasn't going to work for me so I got the bigger foam. Get the bigger foam and cut it to your dimensions. I cut this using a turkey knife. You know those electric turkey knives that you plug in that your grandma had? <laughs> Go ahead and find one of those. You can get them online for cheap. I had a friend who had one, so I just borrowed it from them. Uh, and that'll give you some really, really clean cuts. And that's what you want. You know, some people say you could do it with a bread knife, but you're going to have foam bits coming off. It's going to be a mess. So see what you can do to get yourself one of those electric turkey knives. Uh, and it'll just make your life a whole lot easier. All right. Let's get into deconstructing this a little bit so you can have a closer look at it. So I've made my way over to the rear passenger door and I'm gonna take a break, a quick break from the bed and I'm gonna just show you this guy right here. This board, again, three quarter inch plywood. It's the same material I used for the bed platform and the legs of the shelf. Happens that it just slides nicely in and I can just take that out. Just like so. I just painted that little strip on there for aesthetics. And I'm gonna show you how I put this in here. All I do is I just lift up my little platform of my bed there, get this board here between the platform and the Rubbermaid bin, and I just slide it in a little bit. And the weight of the bed and the tension between the bed platform and the Rubbermaid bin holds that in place. And boom, I got a really nice little cooking surface. I can extend it even longer if I want. It's great. I've made many a sandwich off of this thing. Now that that's out of there, you can see I have some storage here. This is pretty great. I don't know if you can see that in there. It's pretty dark, but pretty much at the end of those trekking poles, that's where my wheel well comes out. Okay, so I do have about, oh, some space. Well, actually, I got space even on the other side, on the, on the other side of the wheel well, because I've got this Rubbermaid bin going horizontal. This Rubbermaid here is going long ways, or vertical, let's say, with the bed. And the one behind it is also going vertical. Whereas the one in the back, as you've already seen, is horizontal so I have them horizontal vertical vertical horizontal all right and that's the 14 gallon Rubbermaid rubberneck bins you guys I will link those below but with that structure to them horizontal vertical vertical horizontal they will fit in a 2002 to 2006 Honda CRV again it's a happy accident that I have some really nice storage here. I even stuffed some jackets in here. I got my long items like my trekking poles, uh, my fishing rods, stuff like that. Now, uh, the floor of my SUV was pretty much uh, flat, but up under these front seat, or under the rear seats, I should say, because I did take out this seat. Okay, obviously, you can see that. I've kept the seat on that side, which is the smallest section of the rear seats. And then I took out uh, the passenger side rear seat, which also included the chunk for the middle passenger. So it was a nice big section that I was able to get out of there. Anyway, back to the point. When you pull that out, you're gonna notice that what was flush and flat uh, floor space at the back of the vehicle 
uh, kind of has like these little ribs that come up and then dip down. That's why you're gonna see some space here. Anyway, I was able to get my Rubberneck Rubbermaid bin up on that at the far end, at the other side, the opposite side of where I am right now. But on this side, it's, it's not touching, you know? I'm actually even touching the rib right there. So right there where my fingers are in, it's on carpet. But I wanted to make sure, so I, anyway guys, I just used a little one inch board that I had left over from my shelf. And I just tucked it in there and it keeps that perfectly level now. So again, when you're leveling your bed, if you're building it the way that I did with these rubber uh, made bins and that's your only base, you're not building a frame, you just kind of have to jimmy it now and then just to find ways to like get those uh, um, bins, excuse me, perfectly level because you want a flat bed. Uh, that didn't take me long though. It took me like a couple minutes to figure that out and it hasn't moved uh, for over 4,000 miles on the road now. That just is there and it's not going nowhere. Um, so yeah, that's the storage on this side and also just a little better look at the bins themselves, where they sit and why. So, uh, this is 26 inches wide, as I said, from this edge here all the way to that edge. It has little tapering uh, places here and there. Uh, this one I just tapered just the corner off, just so that when I'm lifting up this hinge, I don't hit uh, the seatbelt right there. I'll come straight back, rest on the foam. Those are just two simple hinges that I bought at the hardware store. I measured 23 inches from the front, made a straight cut, cut my board in two, and then reconnected it with these two hinges right here. What that allows me to do is, well, a couple things. I can get somebody in the front seat now, because when that's up, I can slide the front seat forward and make room for a passenger. I can also, and this is the main reason that I did it, was that I can get to my main storage much, much easier. So in these two front bins, I keep most of my clothes and yeah, that's pretty much it, jackets and whatnot. Now, underneath this front bin, at the head end of the bed, I had to put something, I had to figure something out, right? Because I've got the three bins in the back from the middle to the, to the foot end of the bed sitting on the floor. Now, of course, this one here, that's the footwell, the passenger footwell. And I needed to make sure that that was flush and level with all my other bins because I want a flat bed, right? So what you do is you measure the depth of your footwell. You get in there, you find the floor just behind the footwell where you took your seats out, and then you measure where that is flat and perfectly flush. You get a, a ruler or measuring tape and you measure exactly how deep your footwell is. Mine happened to be seven inches. So I knew I needed something, a platform, or some sort of box that would lift this Rubbermaid bin up seven inches so that my bed would be perfectly level. I'm gonna show you what I did. I used my extra two drawers. I took the drawer apparatus out of the box and these plastic inners of the drawers that are in the back of the vehicle, they are exactly seven inches high. That was lucky. I was gonna build a little box out of wood, but these are seven inches and I had two of them left over because when you buy these shelves, I knew I needed six, right, in the back of my vehicle. Well, they come in sets of four. So I ended up with eight. I didn't think I'd be able to use the remaining two, but when you're building like this, you sometimes run into synchronicity and happy accidents, and this was a big one for me. So I was able to slide uh, the inner drawer part uh, out of the box itself. They just pop right out. You just kind of wiggle it a little bit, and use those. When I am sleeping, I should mention this, I always pop this guy forward like that. And in here, I have an extra little pillow. See that guy right there? That kind of tucks right in here really nicely uh, and just fills the gap 
and so I got even more headroom now. This is again 72 inches, but this adds about five inches, uh, four or five inches to that. So it's a really nice long bed. My feet do not touch the back door when I'm fully extended. I sleep very well. I'm going to mention this just because we're looking at it. Uh, this is the M powered Lucy Light uh, string of lights. Uh, it's solar powered, so you can recharge it solar. It's got four settings little flashlight setting there, and then three brightness settings on the bulbs themselves. And this thing is amazing. I've got these little uh, LEDs too, the little fairy lights, which plug directly into my Jackery back there. Uh, but this unit is completely independent. It'll charge solar or you can charge it. Here's the end of it there, a little USB. They, uh, they were really smart about it. So I can unhook that and plug that into the Jackery if I don't have a lot of sun uh, and I can recharge it through the Jackery. But these things give off really, really nice light. Whereas the fairy lights, uh, the LEDs are a little more dim. They're fun because they're multicolored, but these are just a nice warm white and boy, do they get bright. I use them on the low setting only and it lasts for 10 days on one charge. So, pretty incredible. Well, that about does it here, you guys. Thank you so much for following along. I hope this video is informative for you, and I hope that if you're planning on building out a small SUV or a Honda CRV, it's given you some ideas and some insight on how to do that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and comment below. I answer every comment I get. And thank you again to my subscribers. If this content was valuable to you, if you enjoy it, if, if you're planning on getting out there and like living that van life, uh, in an SUV or a small rig or anything, please like and subscribe so that I can make more videos and share my experience with you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, guys. See you later.